Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Today I want to do an in-depth review on the Chanel Reissue 226. I will be going over the pros, cons, some extra details, as well as if I recommend this bag. So if you enjoy this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Before I forget, the measurements on this beauty are 10.9 inches in length. It is approximately 7.6 inches in height and 2.9 inches in depth. This bag does have two different strap drops. If you go to double up the straps, it has an 11 inch drop from the top of the chain to the top of the bag. And if you go to single the strap, it is 19 inches from the top of the chain to the top of the bag. Uh, now this bag weighs in at one pound, approximately eight ounces. I always like to add in the weight just in case. And this bag retails for 62 $200 here in the States. Let me give you guys a really quick tour of this bag. This features the age black calfskin leather with the age gold hardware. It does have a turn lock closure and right under here it says Chanel. So there's the front side, there is the side view of it, there's the back side. It does have one exterior pocket that is very generous. The other side view and here is the bottom. And let me show you guys the top really quickly. Uh, okay, so like I said, it is a turn lock closure. It opens up like so and inside it does have the uh, the double flap and here's the first one and it does have that secret um, that secret zipper that secret compartment and here is the space in between the first and the second flap and then on the first one right here it has a very generous opening and this one is a uh, Chanel made in Italy there we go. You also have one little slip pocket here. You have a total of two different uh, slip pockets on the interior as well as this little guy that's the lipstick holder. Uh, all right, and there we go. So that's a really quick tour of the bag. I do have my notes in front of me because I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget anything. So if I keep looking down, you know why. Um, all right, so when it comes to the pros of this bag, for me, hands down, it's gotta be how incredibly lightweight it is, especially when I compare it to other bags within my collection that have around the same type of silhouette, whether it's a medium-sized bag or a large-sized bag. So it is very, very lightweight. And um, I know that this is an extreme, but when it comes to an all-leather handbag, it's as light as a feather. So I think that's a major, major pro. Uh, and because it's so light, Lightweight, it makes it that much more comfortable to use for extended periods of time. So whether you use it for 8, 10, 12, 15 hours, you're good to go. It's not the type of bag that's necessarily going to be digging into your shoulder because of what you're carrying. Now you guys know, sometimes I do like to uh, push the envelope, sometimes I carry everything and the kitchen sink, and there are times that I've carried a little bit more than I should, and I still don't feel that weight on the bag, just because the leather itself is so incredibly lightweight. So I think that's awesome, you know? So again, if you carry a little bit more, if you carry a little bit less, you um, this is definitely a bag that's very, very uh, easy to use for longer periods of time. Um, another pro I'd have to say is how spacious it is. And uh, even though this is a double flat bag, I feel that it is very generous and you're able to carry probably just as much as you do in the uh, Chanel Jumbo Classic Double Flap, if not a little bit more, especially because of the aged calfskin. The aged calfskin gives it a little bit more play, so it's not as stiff, and it gives you that much more space to be able to put your items inside. So I thought I would mention that as well. Another pro that I'd have to say is how versatile this bag is in the sense that you can carry it various ways. So you can either use it as a shoulder bag with the double straps, or you can use it as a shoulder bag on a single strap, and you can also use this bag as a crossbody, which is really, really awesome. And it does have a generous strap drop, in my opinion, when it comes to a crossbody, because sometimes when it comes to um, you know to any type of flat bag from Chanel, they tend to be a little bit shorter, or like myself on my torso, it ends up being a little too high up, or it ends up. Um, hitting my chest a little more than I would like to the point where it almost looks like I'm suffocating the bag and I don't experience that with this one. So I really like the strap drop that it has for whichever way you decide to carry it. Another pro that I'd have to say, I feel that it is a very understated Chanel bag. I know that it's still a Chanel bag, but I feel that it's not um, it's not necessarily too loud, especially because it doesn't have the CC on the very front. So I think that this bag ends up flying under the radar to a certain extent. Call me crazy, but that's just the way that I feel. Um, and another pro that I'd have to say, uh, when it comes to the aged calfskin, it is very carefree. Now, when I first started to do research on this bag, 
I wanted to see the different types of uh, leather that it was available in, and I wanted to see how it would hold up in the rain. Not that it ends up raining too much where I live, but still, just in case I got caught in the rain. And I did a few times within the last year that I've had this bag, and I'm happy to say that I haven't had any issues with the, uh, with the leather. I haven't had any water stains or anything like that. And I wasn't necessarily caught in a downpour, it was more so from the store to my car or from the car to the house or you know things like that and uh, I would end up getting uh, you know raindrops on here and I'd wipe them away and I would wait you know a little bit to see if they'd end up showing up through the leather and absolutely nothing so I really really like the aged calfskin because it makes it that much more durable than some of the other um, than some of the other leathers that uh, that Chanel offers for their handbags. So I'd say it's right around the same um, as caviar leather, at least in my opinion. You know, I know some people might think differently. Another pro that I'd have to say is that I feel that this bag is casual, but it can also transition into a night type of setting very easily. I think that with the gold hardware, it does end up being a little bit more dressed up or the aged gold hardware, it ends up being a little bit more dressed up. If you want something a little bit more casual altogether, I would have to say that the ruthenium hardware would be a really great way to go. So this one, um, I think both of them, either way, whether you go for ruthenium or gold hardware, I think that they both transition nicely. I just feel that between the two, the ruthenium ends up being a little bit more casual than the aged uh, gold hardware. Now, when it comes to the cons, I personally haven't experienced them, but I wanted to throw them out there just in case. The first one being that a lot of people that do have the reissue, they like a lot of details on it, but I've heard some people say that they find that the turn lock closure can be somewhat fussy, you know, and I totally understand where they're coming from. So if you're out and about and you're focusing on what it is that you're doing, you go to take something out of your bag and when you go to put it back in, sometimes this guy might not necessarily line up with the other part of the bag so you can secure it. So like I said, a lot of people find that this is somewhat fussy in comparison to other bags uh, that they might end up having in their collections. Now the other con is more specific to this type of hardware. The age gold hardware, as beautiful as it is, it is more prone to show chipping as time goes by and the more and more that you use it, whether that's on the lock part here or even on the chain. And uh, if you do experience that type of fussiness that I was talking about when it comes to closing this bag, there is a chance that you'll start to see the chips more so on this corner part of the, of the lock here. So again, I wanted to throw that out there just in case. So if you are looking for the reissue and you want something that's not necessarily going to show that chipping, I would recommend going for the ruthenium uh, because that way you don't have to worry that you have uh, contrasting uh, hardware coming through. Uh, so the chipping uh, is something that I've heard people experience uh, quite often when it comes to the reissue. Now, as crazy as it sounds, I personally don't have any cons when it comes to this bag. I completely understand where people are coming from when it comes to the lock or even the chipping when it comes to the hardware. But even if this bag does end up having that type of chipping, for me anyways, it's not going to be an issue because I feel that this bag is already distressed and I really feel that it would end up adding character to it. You know, I know to each their own and people might think about it differently, but really it's, it's, so, it's so bizarre for me to say that this bag has zero cons when it comes to me and my lifestyle. So again, I just want to throw those out there just in case. Now for the sake of being thorough, I wanted to give you guys a few more details and also answer a question that I do get quite often when it comes to the reissue. And that is uh, a lot of people want to know how the straps end up working out for me and if they end up rolling off of my shoulder because it doesn't have the leather woven in between. And I am happy to say that I personally have not experienced that when it comes to the reissue. I almost anticipated it because for me, when it comes to straps, whether it's a leather strap or a, uh, an, a chain strap, I do experience that quite often with some of my handbags and it drives me up the wall. It drives me nuts. So like I said, I almost uh, anticipated it and I was like, okay, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But I am happy to say that for me, the straps end up uh, staying in place. Now, another detail that I want to share with you is the foldable design. Yes, you heard that correctly. The foldable design. Now I had read about it. I had seen videos on YouTube and I was like, no, no way, no way. But until I physically saw it in front of me and I had a sales associate do it at the boutique, I was completely blown away. Now you will notice that the reissue has uh, a little bit of a pointy top here and on the bottom, it doesn't have a very flat bottom. It has a little bit more of a round uh, detail to it. And also on the sides, it has some creasing. So you have the side here, then you have another little flat part right there. This is just part of the design because like I said before, this bag is foldable. They wanted it to be a travel friendly piece. So what ends up happening, you end up just kind of pushing these guys in like so, 
and you have a little bit more of a round bottom. So let me show you guys. So you push this in here and that's what ends up happening. So you can flatten it out a little bit more. Personally, <laughs> I don't want to. I've heard some people uh, end up storing it this way. I would advise against it, but to each their own. Uh, personally, I like to have it completely stuffed and I like to have it on my shelf so that way you can kind of keep it shape a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so it goes from being you know, full to completely flat if need be. So I thought that was gnarly. Like I said, when I saw the sales associate do it, I, I think I honestly gasped very, very loudly and I was like, <gasps> no, <laughs> you know, I know that sounds so silly, but um, I was like, no, 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 no need to show me. Just leave it the way that it is. So the foldable design is pretty crazy. Um, this bag also has a lot of history. And as many of you know, I am a history buff. There's just something about a bag having that much of a story to it that I think it adds um, it adds character to the bag even more so, and uh, you know this was the bag that Coco Chanel designed and everything from the the detail that it has within the chain to other parts of the bag uh, were um, were kind of a tribute to her time in the orphanage. So I thought that was really really nice for her to be able to implement that into her bag. Um, another thing that I had to mention uh, when it comes to the reissue, a lot of people aren't too uh, too big of a fan of it because of the ring. Wrinkles. And uh, I actually like the wrinkles because like I said before, um, I don't want to baby the bag and to me it makes it that much more carefree because I don't have to worry that, that, the, that the quilts are necessarily going to be um, flattened out. I don't have to worry that the scratches are going to show through. I personally haven't had any issues with scratches like I said previously, uh, but I like the wrinkles because no two reissues will be the same. Each one will have its own type of um, it's almost like it has its own type of character, you know? So in my eyes, I said it before, it's kind of like me. I feel like it's aging gracefully because I too have wrinkles. So this is me in a bag. Uh, but yeah, I really like that because it gives it that, that understated look. It gives it that, um, that type of edginess, but also that type of, um, I don't know. I feel like the more and more wrinkles that it has, the more beautiful I think it'll get as time goes by. Again, to each their own, but that's just the way that I feel about it. The last thing that I want to discuss when it comes to this bag has to do with resale value. Now, as beautiful as it is, and as much history as it has, unfortunately, it is not the most popular within the fashion house. And because of its lack of popularity, that ends up affecting its resale value and it doesn't end up maintaining it as well as it should. When I first started to do research on this bag, I looked at the retail price and I also looked at the pre-love market price and there was a substantial difference. I mean, we're talking thousands of dollars of a difference. And I was always curious as to why people weren't too big of a fan of on the reissue. I didn't know if it was because of the wrinkles or maybe because it's a little bit more understated or uh, whatever the case may be. Like I said before, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but still, I was kind of curious. And um, I just noticed that the, the difference between the two, it was just insane. So, I figured, okay, if I end up going on the pre-loved route, um, if for whatever reason this bag doesn't end up working out for me, because I mean, realistically, nobody knows how a bag is going to work out for them unless you experience the bag, right? I mean, you have an idea, but until you have it in your hands and until you start using it, you're not really going to know how it's going to work out for you. So anyways, I was thinking, okay, if for whatever reason it doesn't end up working out and if I go to sell it, I'm not going to lose as much as if I were to go you know, the retail route. So for me personally, it made sense to go the pre-love route because after I took everything into consideration and the fact that I still had that shred of doubt that this bag might not end up working out for me, you know, um, and once I got the bag and once I started using it, that doubt went right out the window, you know? So I love this bag more now than when I first got it and I'm just crazy about it. Uh, but still, it's kind of a shame that it doesn't hold its resale value as well. But if resale value is important to you and that's something that you take into consideration when it comes to adding a handbag to your collection like I do, then I would highly recommend going on the pre-love market to see what they have. I got mine from Fashion File. It was an awesome experience. At one point in time, I had like 20 of these in my cart because I couldn't decide. I felt like I felt like a maniac. You know, I had alerts all over the place. I wanted to make sure I got exactly what I was looking for. And this was in pristine condition. Like I said, it was an awesome, awesome experience. I will make sure and put that unboxing video on the description box below if you guys want to check it out. So like I said before, if resale value is important, then um, I highly recommend going the pre love route, whether it's Yogi's Closet, Fashion File, or any other uh, consignment shop, um, just to give you a little bit more, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit more peace of mind. And in a sense, I also feel that it kind of let me um, it kind of let me let my guard down when it when it came to this bag, because I'm not as 
protective about it. I don't keep it in this bubble. I just use it as such and I rock it, you know, as often as I can and I don't think about anything else, you know what I mean? So I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not, but that's just the way that I see it. So the million dollar question, do I recommend this bag? Absolutely, absolutely I do. I am crazy about it. I use it quite often. It gave my medium large double flap a run for its money to the point where this is now my most used bag. And even though I do like the classic flaps, there's just something about this bag that just, I don't know what it is. I really don't know. I don't know if it's all the pros that I told you guys. I don't know if that it just reminds, it's like me in a bag, like I said earlier. I have no idea, but I absolutely love it. So whether you go brand new or whether you go pre-loved, I think that this would be an amazing addition to any collection. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for my Chanel Reissue 226 review. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help, especially if you're looking to add this back to your collection. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.